Welcome back everyone, KJ4YZI with Ham Radio Concepts. So I have something else for a video that is going to allow me to continue moving on this satellite tracker project. I know a lot of people have asked about it, I'm sorry. I got caught up with other things that were new and important, wanted to make videos, and then I didn't realize a couple things, you know, would require a little more thinking on this. So it's coming along because now I'm eager to get this thing finished, so I gotta start tackling this project again. What I did was I picked up another antenna, and this was the last uh, dilemma for the few, last few weeks or month or so, because the antenna I thought I was going to use for this is not going to work on my tracker. So let me show you this again real quick. Now the tracker has a satellite or a servo for azimuth and elevation up and down. And the problem I have with this antenna that I'm going to show you is this servo was not strong enough to hold that thing in a certain position. So I affixed something and tried to mount it playing with it, and it just boop, fell right down. It didn't have the strength for it. So the original documentation for the satellite tracker, the gentleman used an elk antenna. Now you can use an elk, you could also use an arrow antenna, and that's probably gonna get a bunch of questions and comments. Why not an arrow? Well, we'll check an arrow out later. I read a lot of reviews on this um, elk antenna. Now this is the elk two meter 440 log periodic antenna. And this is a little bit different than a Yagi. And I'm going to just quickly, generically, when we put this together, show you the difference on what this antenna is versus a Yagi. Now, let me show you what I did have on my idea, okay? This is the high gain Yagi that I had. I bought this from MFJ uh, website. And although I did make a video and made contacts in the backyard with this antenna to satellites, and I also used it uh, for FM, you know, uh, FM simplex to test it out. Although it does work and it's a good antenna, it's not designed for what I'm trying to do. And I think that was one of my big problems. The video that I made contacts with, I was like this. And I'm, I'm trying to be very careful, guys. Don't poke your eye out in these things, okay? That's another reason I'm very sketchy about this because I got one eye left. Um, so I was out there in the video making contacts and I was holding it. Not very heavy at all. It's kind of lightweight. But when you do this for 10 minutes, right, my wrist was getting really sore. Maybe I have just weak wrists, whatever. Um, but it did work, but I don't think it was designed for that. Can it work? Yes. Um, but the, another thing was, this really isn't made to just fold up in a minute and put back in a bag and take it with you. So what I didn't want to do was I didn't have one, I didn't want something that stays on this tracker when it's in my room like this and me turn and poke my eye out. You know, I want to take the thing apart, put it in my truck, go traveling and take it out, set it up, whatever. So again, although this is good for maybe a permanent installation or even a temporary, it's not gonna work for the servo gear up here, the weight of it, and my practi practical designs or what I wanna do, you know, for being able to take it apart. So now, the, the elk antenna, I picked this up from Gigaparts, and um, this is what I'm probably gonna use because this is what the guy had in his satellite tracker project, and probably why. You could take it apart, um, put it in a bag, and it's lightweight, okay? Now this can be used, I'm gonna show you, this can be used handheld, like that, or it can be used fixed like this, or you could use it permanent mounted. The, from what I understand, the guy at Elk says that people actually use these for permanent installations if they wanna use a Yagi outside because it is built rugged, powder coated, um, five element dual band log periodic, and I'll show you now, uh, we'll take it apart real quick how it goes together, then I'll show you the difference on what the log periodic is designed compared to a Yagi like this. And no, I'm not gonna get into the high tech scientific details about it. There's just a big difference between a log periodic and a Yagi. Let's take it apart first and check it out. Ham Radio Concepts. Okay, so let me give you the specs here on this paper. Okay, and um, this is, again, one big thing that a log periodic is different than a Yagi. So the uh, specs are five element dual band with a SO239. I think you can get it with an N as well. I didn't need the N. Black powder coated booms. Two meter gain is seven, uh, 8.7 dBi and 440 gain is nine dBi. Now here's the catch. 20 dB front to back ratio but it maintains a 1.1 to 1 SWR across the entire VHF and UHF spectrum. 144 to 148 megahertz, the entire two meters, a 1.1 to 1. 427 to 450, a 1.1 SWR. That's very broadbanded. That's one of the advantages of a log periodic. So 
you can do work sideband, FM, repeaters, moon bounce, whatever. I mean, all, all, the whole entire spectrum you can do with this antenna. Uh, and the difference between the Yagi is the Yagi has one center frequency, and the farther you stray away from that frequency that it's cut, that's when your gain in front to back starts to change. So we'll get into that. So the instructions here, I don't know if I need to read them, but we're going to find out. I mean, it's got some uh, interesting information tells you about, you know, two bands with just one coax fitting. Use a dual band HT for satellite. Great for DX, uh, fox hunting, MCOM, and more. Uh, polarity change by twisting the mounting assembly and uh, the instructions. So I'm not going to open, I'm going to see if I can figure this out with you like this, because I like doing that. Who wants to have to read a book and then be an expert and put something together, right? This might be pretty easy. So, black powder coated, okay, it's got color coded elements, you can see the color bands here, so that gives you an idea of which elements go where. But there's not much to it, so here's the PVC parts, that's for mounting, and I originally thought when I looked at the guy's satellite tracker plans when he made this, and I wanted to copy it, I originally thought that this was the guy's design, I guess the elk comes with that, and we're going to figure out how to mount that on my tracker, and also, see, this is your handheld piece, okay? You may say, well, why is there PVC? Well, do you want to pay $300 for an antenna or do you want to pay like $119 for something like this? I don't care if that's PVC with a nice rubber grip on it. That way I could go out there and satellites, you know, fox hunt, whatever. So that's fine for me. Um, here is the boom, okay? And uh, so what it looks like is that the boom also has the color bands on it. So I'm going to guess without opening the manual that that's where I'm going to screw on the elements. Um, those you know, uh, those colors. And then this is gonna be the mount here. And one side, okay, this is going to be the front. Let's see, there you go. The front is going to have the feed point. Another difference from a Yagi versus a log periodic. So this is gonna be fed at the front and essentially all the elements are active. Okay, rather than having the one, let me, let me show you. We'll put this together first and I'll show you. So we'll take the red ones here. And they just screw on. See, another plus on why I wanted this antenna. And the arrow is the same way, but I'm going to go with all what I read. And look, they just simply screw on, okay? Doesn't make it any easier than that. So that is why I wanted to have this. Oh, and I'll show you what else is in the box. I totally forgot about it. I've got the carrying case, okay? So let's put all these elements on real quick and uh, take a look at it. Okay, put the last ones on. Now, I remember reading online that it did say, if you plan on putting this outdoor to permanent installation, which is totally fine, use a little bit of purple Loctite, not the stuff that keeps it on permanently, to keep these from unscrewing and winds and stuff. Okay, there is the five elements, took about 30 seconds to screw those on, they're color coded. Okay, they're nice and tight. Now, look at the log periodic here, let me see if I back up. Okay, uh, we'll do it this way. So, SO239 in the front is where you're gonna feed the cable. Now, you can see, one, two, three, four, five. It progresses this way. So this is not like a typical Yagi. Let me show you here again now. We'll use the high gain as a demonstration, okay? Here is the high gain. This is the driven element in the middle, your feed point, okay? That's cut for a specific frequency. Now, you have your driven element, then behind it, you have a reflector, which is 5% longer than the dri driven element, then you have a director in the front, which is 5% smaller. And if you have a five or like my 13 element Kushcraft up there, it's you know a driven element, the reflector, and I think 11 directors in front of it. That gives you more of a narrow pattern, right? Three elements about common. And then for the UHF, it has, I guess, a harmonic on the driven element. Then you have five elements on UHF, the reflector here, and then one, two, three, four. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five for UHF, three for VHF, right? That's how Yagi would work, but this is only going to be specific for one frequency and anything above or below that. If you tune this for 145 or 146, and then you go to 147.5 or 144, it's going to change because you're not on that one frequency. It may be a little bit more broadbanded than that, but I guarantee you can't go on a Yagi from 427 to 450 and have the same exact uh, gain and SWR. So that's the Yagi, right? No problem with the Yagi. Doesn't mean a Yagi's bad. Log periodic. So you're gonna feed this, but you see, each set of elements that are active are a different size. That's how it's maintaining 
across the entire two meter band. It's not a driven and then reflectors and directors. It doesn't work like that. So it's when you look at the boom here, it's essentially all of these are connected and, and active when you're transmitting. And it's basically resonating where the elements are cut for, okay? And then on UHF now, the UHF um, is a like a third harmonic on these. So this is a third, what is it? What would that be? Like a wave and a quarter, a wave and a half of two meters or UHF, you know what I mean? It's not a quarter wave on UHF. It's like a wave and a half or three quarter wave or something like that. Can't think of that. So it's a resonant. And then the same thing. All of these are harmonics to the size of um, UHF, okay? So you're covering the entire band. Now, enough of the documentation there. This is very light. This is very, very light. Um, I think they said 1.6 pounds or something like that. I could take two fingers, look. Two fingers and I could hold the thing up like this. Just two fingers, all right? Can't really do that with this bigger one. So that's gonna mount perfectly when I get it mounted on my tracker like this, okay? And also, see the nice rubber caps? It's less likely for me to poke my eye out, okay? Um, so that's gonna be something like this, if you can see that, let me see. Like this, exactly what it looks like in the, in the picture when you're, you're building the satellite tracker when he built it was, let's see, somewhat like this, right? Oh, upside down, I'll fix that. Then this is gonna go somewhere like this, maybe higher. And then the antenna can go up and down, left and right, turn, okay? So that's how that's going to go. Now, what I'll do instead of, oh, and then, now if you wanted to use this, what you could do is you could put these back on, or this PVC mount like this, okay? Now, you take your handle, there you go. Now you have a handheld antenna. And again, that's a lot lighter than what that high gain was. So I could be out there like this turning, okay? Very, very light wind load, very light, you know, antenna, a lot lighter. So that's the idea of a log periodic and what I'm going to use. What I'll try to do in the next couple of days is I'll watch the passes and I'm gonna take this outside with my handheld and make some passes on satellite just to make sure I have gotten it working, okay? Then when you see it on the satellite tracker, uh, you'll know what's going on there. Or I could refer people that find the satellite tracker, hey, what's that? Go back and look at the antenna on the elk, right? Uh, more re reviews and information is online. They do sell this at gigaparts.com and some other um, vendors out there, uh, elk and whatever, but I just bought, you know, I buy all my stuff from gigaparts. Gigaparts better remember that when I'm spending all my savings in their store. <laughs> By the way, going to gigaparts soon, next week or this weekend coming up, uh, just a little uh, FYI, I'll be at Gigaparts and flying out there. That'll be the first time I ever went in a ham radio store in my life. And I'll be on the air for several hours. I'm going to use all of their radios and antennas. Hopefully I'll work on the air next weekend. So uh, December 7th, I think it is, a Saturday. I'll be up there 7th and 8th or something like that. So uh, I want to go play at Gigaparts store. That way I can just go beating up all their equipment. That'd be fun, right? Get you, take you around the store and uh, show you what's there. And I also have the Elk Bag Mark II with shoulder strap. So very cool if I want to go to field day and bring the antenna with me or just, um, you know, one of the QRP events for the local club. Very cool bag here, okay? So all the stuff, well, you can see right there, I can drop it back down in three minutes. I'll have this thing in the bag, over my shoulder, ready to go. And also, I didn't realize this came with it, but this is a um, SM, it's a SMA mail to an SO239 little jumper cable. So I guess that allows you to, um, you know, connect from there to this. And you already have your adapter if you want to use a Bofung HT or if you want to use, uh, you know, a Yesu or an ICOM or a, the Ushan satellite handheld that I have, it comes with the adapter too. Pretty cool stuff. I didn't know that was in the package, but the shoulder strap makes it really nice. Uh, there's the bag here, uh, really cool to put this thing away and uh, keep it away so it's not damaged, you know? That's it, guys. Um, difference between a log periodic and an elk, but not your typical, I am the biggest ham radio operator in the world kind of video. You get the idea. And now you know what's going on with my satellite tracker. And I'll probably repurpose this. What I'll probably do with this one is put this up for vertical, okay, outside, so I can hit some, you know, um, FM simplex stations north of me and some distant repeaters. And then what I'll do is I'll turn my 13 element 
back to horizontal for sideband. Now I'll have sideband two, meter UH, uh, two meters, and I'll have vertical UHF and VHF with that antenna. So it's not a waste. It's not uh, going in the garbage, but this is going to be my new satellite antenna. 7-3 guys, thanks for watching. KJ4, YZI.